Today I'm gonna open up this Bosch Motronic computer. It's from a, a 944, a Porsche 944. Um, the Bosch Motronic system was used in BMWs. It was used in lots of different Porsches of the 80s and 90s. It may have been used in Mercedes. Um, it's a pretty, it was a pretty common platform for a while there. But the, the computer itself, it's, you know, regardless of what brand car it comes in, it's very similar. It's got an aluminum panel on this side, a big plug here, and then a steel cover on this side. And the steel cover is held on with, with little tabs. So we're going to open up those tabs and open it up. The, uh, the, the Bosch system calls it a DME, which stands for Digital Motor Electronics. You will also hear it called an ECU engine um, engine control unit um, or the computer, the brain, lots of different terms. So to start off I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to pry up all of the tabs a little bit. And I'm really prying them up a little bit so I can get a meat on those plier. pliers, kind of straighten them up. If your computer's been opened a number of times before, some of these tabs may break off. There's not a whole lot you can do about that. As long as you have some of the tabs holding it shut, I think it's going to be good enough. straight. This cover should just lift right off. It does. This has had some water damage, some moisture in there. You can tell by the corrosion. There is a little breather hole, but somehow it got in there. There's a little plastic um, protecting sheet to protect any of the, the contacts on this side of the board from touching the case. And again, you can see some of that, that corrosion right here on the board. Now it's probably not, it looks mostly like kind of dirty water. I wonder if this got partially submerged in kind of muddy water. Um, you know, it probably doesn't affect the, the functionality of it. But I'll show you some of the key places to look. So you can see this is two boards. Two boards actually make this up. And then there's this ribbon cable that connects the two boards. So to open it up, if you're going to change the chips or if you really want to inspect it, there's two plastic standoffs on either side of this ribbon cable, and each side has a kind of like a, a socket, like a little uh, pin and a little socket joint. So this is obviously the joint on this side, <clears throat> and this is the joint on this side. Sometimes you can just, with your fingers, kind of push it apart. This one I think has never been apart, so I may try to use a screwdriver to see if I can separate that a little bit. And I'm just gently in here push this up. Now I'm actually going to grab a larger screwdriver because that'll give me a little bit better leverage. All right, I have my larger screwdriver. I put it right against the side of that. Am I able to, to push this up a little bit? Let's see. Yeah, so that side's unclipped do the same with this side. You know, we don't want to pull too hard on the board. The board's fiberglass. It's pretty strong. But if you crack a board, you've got way worse problems. There it goes. All right. So now that these two standoffs are separated, we can kind of flex this up. And with my fingers, I like to kind of give a little push on the back side of those ribbon cables to help them open up. And as these boards separate, this upper board is in a groove in this plastic piece in the front. So this part of the board just slides into that groove, and then there's this little opening around this little piece of metal here, this heat sink. And then once we have it opened, this is what the inside looks like. 
This is the, the main DME chip. This is the main chip that, that controls, that has your programming. So if you change chips, this is what you're changing. This chip is actually in a socket. I don't know how well you can see, but its pins are in a socket, and the socket is soldered to the board. So you can take a screwdriver and you can gently pry this up. I pry a little bit on both sides and you'll be able to wiggle it right up. There's a notch on this side of the chip. That notch is an important orientation, uh, determines the orientation of the chip. So if you have an aftermarket chip, you have to make sure that notch is on the same side. This particular DME is the 24 pin uh, chip. You'll notice that there's actually some blank holes here. The later computers have a 28 pin socket and a 28 pin chip. The chips are not interchangeable. You need to have you know, the right size chip for the, the right DME. You can convert an early one to 28 pins, but you have to solder on some extra um, sockets here. And you, there's a few other changes you can do to the board. But a few things to look at the board, especially if you're having computer problems, is some of the solder joints, especially the solder joints where the ribbon cable connects. And this board, if you unscrew it from this aluminum back plate with these, these four screws here, these four screws actually hold the board in place, and then the two little screws here hold this plastic connector in place. Where these pins on the connector connect to the board, I have seen solder, I've seen the solder crack at those spots too. So if you do have an erratically running car and you think it might be the computer, you know, clean this all up very well and even with a magnifying glass, look very closely and look for corrosion and or little cracks in any of these solder joints. And if you do see some, take out your soldering iron, heat them up and let that solder reflow and you may solve the problem. And then when you're ready to put it back together, again, it's just the, the reverse. You're going to line up the, the tip of the board to go into the slot, and then you're just going to push it together, and then you're going to line up the standoffs and squeeze so it snaps together. I don't have this all the way in here. There it is. You'll squeeze so it snaps together, and then you put the cover back on, and you're, you're good to go. Now, one more thing to point out. This little switch here, is accessible through this little rubber boot on the uh, on the on the case, and that's called the fuel quality switch or the FQS. And uh, the Bosch programming allows you to adjust the the fu the fuel amount. You can change the percentage of the fuel amount a little bit, and also your timing based on turning the switch. And there's some guides online for what all the settings are. But what it essentially lets you do is in a place where you can't get a certain octane fuel, you can back off the timing, or uh, because of an altitude change, you may need to reduce the fuel so that uh, it's not running rich because there's not as much air at high altitudes. So that's inside DME.